For Those Who Are Politically Wise, a show about the lives of Christians in Ohio involved with politics. Introducing your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Greetings, my fellow patriots, saints, and sinners. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. At the end of the show, there will be a blessing. Don't miss it. But first, a word from our sponsor. Do you pray for a politician? Do you think a politician can be a Christian? Do you think a politician should stand up for Christian principles? Do you think politicians should pray together? Do you want to see more Christians in politics? If you said yes to any of these questions, please join the Ohio Prayer Caucus Network. Find the Ohio Prayer Caucus Network on Facebook. Welcome back to Politically Wise. The opinions and statements on this show belong to those who give them. The rest of the show belongs to Thomas Wise Words, all rights reserved. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Hello, my listeners. This is Reverend Thomas Wise. The show is called Politically Wise. Today, I have a very special guest for you. My guest, would you please introduce yourself? Yes. Glad to be here with you, Reverend Wise. I'm Leah Carowin. I'm the Executive Director of the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation. Would you explain to us what the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation is? Sure. Yeah, the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation is a nonprofit organization. We were designed and created in 2005 to work alongside the Congressional Prayer Caucus. And I'm sure many of your listeners may not be aware that there is an actual official U.S. House Congressional Prayer Caucus with over 100 members in it who are leveraging the power of unity and also working together to successfully reverse the attempts to erase God. The Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation uh, works alongside government leaders, these government leaders at the federal level, the national level, and also the government leaders at the state and local level who are committed to a common vision of, of protecting our religious freedom, preserving our Judeo-Christian heritage, and promoting prayer in God's place in America. How did the Congressional Prayer Caucus come about? Well, that actually is a wonderful story. And in two th- early 2005, Congressman Randy Forbes from Virginia uh, had an opportunity to, to do something special. And what he did was he reserved, he asked for Room 219 to be reserved in the U.S. Health Capitol. It's a strategic room right across the aisle from where they do their votes, where the House does their votes. And he asked that that room be reserved for 30 minutes every week at the beginning, the first night of session, so members of Congress from both sides of the aisle could come together and pray together. And, and now what started with just a couple of members now is oftentimes a room filled with legislators on both sides of the aisle praying for each other, praying for wisdom, asking God to help them to, to lead this country well. And out of that prayer time and those relationships, at the end, toward the end of 2005, they formed the Congressional Prayer Caucus. And that grew from just a couple, and that's a bipartisan group. Congressman Forbes joined together with Democrat Congressman Mike McIntyre. And so it is a, it is a bipartisan effort on one issue to ensure that God keeps his enduring place in America and that Americans are free, uh, have freedom of conscience and freedom of religion in this nation. And then out of that, uh, the Congressional Prayer Caucus was foundation was formed to come alongside and work uh, alongside these leaders. Are there any leaders from Ohio involved, any congressmen from Ohio involved in this uh, prayer, uh, prayer caucus? It's very possible. I'm sure there are. I don't have the list in front of me, um, but I'm sure that there probably are. I, and it, I, it, I it, heard that Jim Jordan and Mike Turner had been there. I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Jordan definitely is. And I can, you know, I could answer that by saying that people can go to Congressman Forbes' website and look at the list of 100 members if you want. What is that website? It's, it's, his, it's Congressman Randy Forbes. It's his actual congressional website. Then how long have you been involved with him? 
Well, I actually helped found the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation in 2005. I was one of its original uh, founding people, and I helped that for about a year. And then uh, after we had it up and running, I just sort of returned back to my profession, my business. With uh, I've had a long time business with my husband for 20 plus years at that point. Passed the leadership on to some other folks who, who we felt would be a good fit to take over the foundation. And then in 2009, uh, I was asked to take it back and become the director of the foundation, which is a bit of a surprise to me. I had no intention or plan to actually leave the foundation. I thought my job was simply to help found it and then pass it on to those who were meant to lead it, but uh, the Lord had other plans for me. So what is the, the work now, this uh, Per Caucus Foundation? Well, the foundation, what we're doing is we, we have multiple uh, uh, strategies, and it's probably wrapped up in three words, prayer, action, and education. We have, uh, when people began to hear about Room 219 and these leaders that were praying in Room 219, uh, people across the country started calling and asking how they could find out about what they're praying about and pray with them. And so we began forming 219 prayer groups or asking prayer groups to add 219 prayer to their already formed groups. So we now have over 8,000 219 prayer groups and individuals across the nation that we communicate with weekly, giving them, sending them prayer updates on what is urgent across the nation and, and at the federal level related to religious freedom and, and God's place in America. We also have about almost uh, 63,000 individuals who are also committed prayer partners that we communicate by mail uh, uh, monthly. Then, then um, in addition to the prayer, we believe that the action piece of it is crucial. So we began to help state legislators form this network of uh, clearinghouse of ideas and a uni- unified effort to work together to ensure that the nation be redirected um, away from this secular slide um, that it's on right now. And so that's where we began to form the American Prayer Caucus Network that we could help equip and mobilize uh, government leaders at the state and local level to have the same kind of victories that the national leaders were having uh, on this issue. And then also we've empowered citizens to come alongside. So we have state directors in every state, a nationwide network of citizens who are joining with our congressional and state leaders to, uh, to work together on, on, the, on God's place in America. And then the last thing is education, and that's partly what we're doing today is we spend a, a good bit of time just trying to help people uh, become aware of the critical state that our nation's in and the desperate need of every citizens to get engaged and to make sure that they stand for God's place in America and protecting religious freedom. What states are we currently in? We have about uh, 15 states, uh, North Carolina. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do them all off the top of my head, but Virginia, North Carolina, of course, Ohio Prayer Caucus legislation. Uh, there's one right there in Ohio, um, Missouri, Michigan, um, North Carolina, Maine, Connecticut, Colorado, Oklahoma. Hmm, I'm trying to think if there's some more. We have a we have a big event that's launching. Uh, Illinois Prayer Caucus is launching this November with a big launch event at their state capitol. Where does a person find out about their state caucus? Right now, they can go to PrayUSA.com, www.PrayUSA.com, and there's a drop down list right there, and you can just drop it down and and go to your state and find out if there's somebody, um, there's, there's a state director there, if there's prayer caucus chairmen that are uh, identified and are actively uh, engaged. Uh, so has any of these prayer caucuses been in the news lately? In the news lately. I think probably the, I know Pennsylvania made a big, I actually didn't mention Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania made a, a, a strong effort to ensure that in God we trust, our national motto is put up on the schools and the yeah schools throughout Pennsylvania. And so they are working on legislation. And I know one of our chairman, uh, Representative Saccone in Pennsylvania, he also passed some very important legislation uh, the last couple of years, uh, making it 2012, I believe, was the year of the Bible. He passed legislation for or promoted, and then it was passed, posed uh, legislation for a day of fasting, humiliation, and prayer. 
So he, he's been very active in Pennsylvania. It's hard for me sometimes to keep up with all the activities of the legislators and what they're doing, but I do know that there's been a, a huge effort on a lot of legislators and state directors and citizens to ensure that, that we be proactive in making sure that our policies and our laws continue to reflect Judeo-Christian values. So you brought up the In God We Trust. Is there other places that they're putting this, other than Pennsylvania, have efforts to put In God We Trust? Yeah, the In God We Trust campaign is a very exciting campaign. That actually was launched when, in November of 2011, the Congressional Prayer Caucus members proposed in the U.S. House, House Resolution 13, which was to reaffirm In God We Trust as our national motto and encourage the public display of it in every school and government building and institution across the nation. Well, that was a huge effort to... Uh, and the the reason why they did that was to c- combat the aggressive anti faith attack on re- on removing every all the symbols off of our monuments and capitol buildings and out of uh, crosses off of our graves and and the 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 constant barrage of trying to remove God from the nation and so they and even even the attacks on our national motto people just saying that it's not our national motto and at the highest level in our land. Um, they felt like it was important to, to ensure that people understood it absolutely is our national motto. And it's crucial that we remember that and we keep it in its proper place. And so they, they put forth this resolution, and it passed in Congress 396 to 9. This was not a bipartisan effort. This was both sides of the aisle saying, we need to ensure that In God We Trust remains our national model and people know about it, so let's put it up all across the nation. So what we did is the foundation is we helped them launch In God We Trust Put It Up a national campaign to put In God We Trust up all across the nation. And so we have multiple people that are getting involved with this. It's there. It's really taken off. Not only have 100 members of Congress put it, uh, agreed to put displays up in their offices, a, a beautiful display in God We Trust, our national motto, but we also had a, a shout-out, a social media shout-out last week that went out to 1.5 million fans, Facebook fans. Uh, we have a window clean, uh, million window clean campaign that's going on right now that people can go to. In fact, they can go to the Ohio Prayer Caucus Facebook page and they can buy a $5 window clean. It's removable. It's very tasteful. In God we trust, our national motto. We want that to go up on a million cars, homes, office windows across this nation. And we have probably 30 right now organizations that have jumped on board. In the first couple of weeks, we sold over 20,000 window cleans. I think people really get it. They're tired of being told they have to be quiet. They have to keep their faith to themselves. It's not welcome in the public square. And I think people understand that symbols have value. And this is an attack on our heritage. It's an attack, and, and, and we're pushing back. And Michigan did a, a statewide art contest that went into 600 high schools all around this theme of In God We Trust. So there's a, there's a great um, and exciting movement to say we're not going to be quiet anymore. We're not going to just play defense. We're going to go, we're going to speak up and, and affirm that, yes, we are a nation that welcomes God and it is in God that we trust. People can go to the Ohio Per Caucus Facebook page and buy one of these window cleans. Have you seen uh, any, any interesting places where, where they put up these in God we trust uh, uh, window cleans? Yeah, we're actually getting, uh, we're getting people sending us pictures of where they put it up in their cars, uh, where they put it up in their homes. Um, we're, we're going to have a, a time in September where we're going to do a massive blitz where we're going to ask people to, to, to put all of their, uh, you know, post all of their pictures of where this window cling is. Uh, we'll, that'll be coming out shortly. We're going to set a date. Um, we have, uh, we've also had churches that have put in God we trust up on their marquees. Um, we've had, we had one company that actually painted in God we trust across their van. Um, they were absolutely committed to making a statement. But we, uh, we expect over the next weeks and months even to see these window cleans all over the nation. And I can't wait to see some of the pictures that are going to come as to where people have placed these window decals. Cleans of, uh, how close are you to your million? Any idea yet? Well, well, we just started. We've just launched the campaign. And just in the first couple of weeks, over 20,000 window cleans were, 
were uh, were sold. And not only that, but we now have uh, a few dozen uh, organizations that have gotten behind it uh, really within the first, again, couple of weeks that have said, we're going to start promoting this. We have notable uh, people behind it, uh, Mike McIntyre, Congressman Allen West. Um, certainly, um, uh, we have organizations like the American Family Association, uh, the Catholic Vote, uh, FRC, Family Research Council. We have quite a few organizations that have jumped on board and said, this is important, and we're going to start promoting this. And so we expect to see over the next couple of months a significant number of these. Um, hopefully by the September or October, we should hit our goal of a million windows across this nation. So if you want to f- find out more general information, you can go to the uh Prairie USA website? Uh, I would suggest people go to information about if they're if one information about the foundation and what we're doing, the best website to go to is cpcfoundation.com. Uh, cpcfoundation.com tells you about the website. If you want to know about the states and what's happening in your state, you can go to prayusa.com and drop down the menu and find out what state is active in your uh, your area, and then um, in godwetrust.com for more information about this in God We Trust window clean. But certainly if you want to purchase one, if you're in Ohio, go to the Ohio Prayer Caucus Facebook page. Any, any other things that the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation is uh, working on or plan to be coming up soon? Well, we're, we are advancing our this network of leaders. We have over 400 that are part of this network right now, but we're only in about 15 states. So we hope to be in all 50 states by the end of 2015. Uh, we have some very important meetings and conferences and summits that are coming up for our government leaders that uh, we believe will have a, a big impact on mobilizing these leaders to, to work together. And, and I think this In God We Trust campaign also is probably our, a big thrust of what we're doing. We have a commitment to uh, getting out the message as well. So we have several things in the works of how we're going to increase opportunities to get the message out of, of what's happening on the nation and what throughout the nation um, in, in the dangers of removing God from every part of our society and the people who are bent on, on furthering their agenda. So we have some ways in which we're going to make sure people are aware of that and, and have opportunities to do something and take a stand uh, against, this, uh, against this, uh, this effort. The show is titled Politically Wise, and I am your host, Reverend Thomas Wise. Partnership with Liberty Prayer Network. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. We'll talk about this next on Freedom's Call. An intercessory prayer ministry has now officially merged with Liberty Council and brought to life the Liberty Prayer Network. Through prayer, we will intercede for the United States, biblically-based public policy, and champions of life, liberty, and the family. While praying for our nation, we remain committed to standing with Israel and partnering with those from other nations who uphold religious freedom, the sanctity of human life, and the family. We are enlisting prayer patriots to take a stand in their home states, lifting high the torch of liberty and calling others to worship God and to pray for His blessings. If you would like to join the Liberty Prayer Network, call us today at one 800 671-1776. That's 800-671-1776. Or visit our website at lc.org. If you want to email me, you may do so at politically.wise at gmail.com. Please like us on our Facebook page, Politically Wise. What is it like to work on the national level uh, with all these leaders and all these uh, congressmen and and national ministry leaders, and you know, you you you, you, thought, you thought you were going in one direction, and now you're you're being thrusted in a, in another. So, what is that like for you? Yeah, I have to admit, it was it has come as a little bit of a surprise. I mean, I'm like probably every one of your listeners out there. I was just busy raising my family. I'm a wife, a mother, and a business person, an entrepreneur. I my husband and I had our own business. We did training and consulting, and and. Uh, we were busy just building a life, and then right in the middle of it, as we watched the the, the things that were happening in our country and the ways in which uh, it was being torn apart and people, uh, God was being uh, rejected in every corner, you know, we offered ourselves, Lord, what do you want us to do about that? And and when when it became obvious that the Lord was opening this door and asking me to do something that was much bigger and beyond anything I ever dreamed of doing, 
uh, as the director of this foundation. And it, and it certainly, these last few years, I have definitely, like you said, gone into areas and met with people I never even dreamed of, of talking with and meeting with. But there's two, two things that come to mind. One is, well, three things, actually. One is that, you know, each one of us is called to do whatever the Lord, whatever the Lord has called you to do, do it. Do it with all your heart. Don't hesitate. Don't shrink back. Don't question. Just go for it. And the Lord has a, has a path and, and, and will empower you with the grace and the wisdom. The scripture that I always refer to, I feel like it was the one he gave me at the very beginning, was don't lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your paths. And I lean on that on a daily basis. I trust the Lord will direct the paths, because the things that we're trying to do are clearly bigger than any one person. And when I work with these government leaders or these leaders of faith group organizations, I think the thing that strikes me is every one of them is just like me. <laughs> They're all just common people that have been called to do something bigger than what they could possibly do themselves, and they've been equipped and trained and put into positions of authority. And some are leading according to a biblical worldview, and they're leaning hard on God, and some are leading to man's wisdom and leading them into foolishness and deception. And it's as simple as that. Um, if we lean into the wisdom of God, he will lead us into um, such great places and we'll, we'll see the blessing of his hand. But if we don't, then we get, you know, the kinds of things that we're getting now, uh, just a decline in, in, in every area of our nation. And we must turn back to God. And so it, it's a joy and a privilege, but honestly, it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge on a lot of days. And it feels like a tidal wave coming against me at times. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's no real answers or solutions. Even this morning as I was praying with my team, it was, Lord, you know, there's no solutions in the natural realm. Uh, we are counting on you doing supernatural things that will that we will give you the glory for. And that's probably the sums up the, <laughs> the path I've been on for the last five years. Who has been a mentor for you? Um, it's actually been really challenging in this situation because when I started this, I asked those questions. I said, who can I learn from? Who can I go to that has done this before, that has put a foundation together like this, that has worked with government leaders, that has tried to combine um, government and religion and and citizens all in a you know in sort of a movement and honestly i was told this has not been done before this is a mm. new thing there's nobody that you can really pattern after well that that was a bit of a shock to my system because i have always had mentors i've had business mentors spiritual mentors um you know mentors in how to do family and home i've always looked for somebody that could show me the way, and who's done it before. So I've had to piecemeal sort of a little bit, glean a little bit from, from various leaders and various, you know, take a little advice here and a little advice there. Um, you know, I rely he heavily on trusting the Lord to, to direct our steps. So how can people pray for you? I think the biggest prayer is just that I would be lean heavily into hear the Lord's voice every single day, led by the Spirit, and and only do what the Lord leads to do because I don't. There's not enough time to waste time on on man's wisdom and on uh, on things that are not relevant and are not um, God driven. Uh, we need supernatural answers, and so for for grace, for wisdom, to hear His voice, to listen, the courage to do what He says and obey quickly, um, protection for me and the family and everybody that's involved in, in, in really trying to release God again in this nation. That's, those are probably the big things that come to mind. So what's a typical day for you, if there is such a thing? Yeah, if there is such a thing. Well, we start every morning at 8.30 with prayer for the, with the team and um, make sure that we get our hearts and our minds right and are focused on Him. And then we uh, go into, you know, we have a huge amount of conversations that we have with, with leaders and people across the nation. I might be working on strategy for next steps. I might be working on infrastructure, um, might be writing, uh, editing, 
communications that are going out, certainly a good bit of travel, quite a bit of travel because we have to go to, you know, meet with the various launching prayer caucuses across the nation. That's usually done in person. They usually go to a state, meet the legislators, identify the state directors. And, um, yeah, so a lot of, a lot of variety for sure. Yeah, it definitely is a calling, isn't it? It is. It really is for sure. What advice would you have for someone following in your footsteps? Uh, stick close to Jesus. Uh, don't stray very far. Make sure that your heart is soft before him so that you can hear his voice. And when he corrects you, when he, when he shows you some, the ways in which you're, you're becoming, um, leaning in your own understanding and becoming driven or trying to do it on your own strength, um, pay attention, turn around, repent quickly. Don't hold uh, offenses. Make sure that you're, you have a clean slate and have kept your heart pure, not only professionally but personally. And if you have a family, make sure that you have, keep your priorities. Your priority still is the Lord and your sweet relationship with Him. Uh, your spouse, your children, keep them as a priority. Don't let it get, don't let your, what you're doing be, feel so important that it's, that you neglect the, the, the sacred trust that God has given you to care for your family. That's about most important. The only reason, absolute only reason that I have been able to function and do the things and accomplish what I've accomplished is because of a, a, a relationship that is crucial um, an intimacy with the Lord that I that I desire and, and long for, and a great relationship with my husband that we have worked hard to nurture and keep at the forefront, and and two amazing kids who are solid and healthy and following Jesus and supportive and and are you know released into their own lives in a healthy way. That's the only reason I can turn so much energy toward doing something like this for the nation is because things are in in the priorities are correct. In, in my life. Well, we've been talking for quite a while now. Is there anything else that you wanted to bring up in this interview? I would say probably the only thing is, a, is an exhortation uh, to people that the most important number one thing they could do if they care at all about uh, the sacred stewardship that the Lord has given us in America and, and, and ensuring that we remain free is to make sure that you are on your knees daily praying for our nation, praying for the leaders, every single leader, praying that God would have his way in America. And then, number two, get up off your knees and do something about it. Take a stand, get informed, be a part of the solution, uh, make sure that you take action, and if need be, educate yourself on what's going on, and at least do what God has told you to do. You don't have to do everything, but do something. Do what the Lord has told you to do. So that would be my exhortation to anybody that's listening. Well, thank you again for this interview. Could you give us the websites again that you want uh, my listeners to uh, check out? Sure. They can always go to cpcfoundation.com if they want to know more about the foundation. Uh, go to the Ohio Prayer Caucus Facebook page and make sure that you buy your In God We Trust uh, window clean for your uh, for your car or your home or your office. And then if you're interested to know about what's happening and uh, at your prayer caucus, if you're listening from any other location and you want to know what's going on in other states, just go to PrayUSA.com and drop, go to the drop-down list, and you can find out what's going on in other states around the nation. Well, thank you again for this interview. My listeners, this is Reverend Thomas Wise. The show is called Politically Wise. I've been interviewing the National Director for the Congressional Prayer Caucus Foundation, Leah Carolyn. Thank you again for this interview. Thank you for listening today. If you want to email me, you may do so at politically.wise at gmail.com. Please like us on our Facebook page, Politically Wise. Now, here is your blessing. Blessings based on Psalms chapter 19, verses 7 through 11. For your blessing. The law of the Lord is perfect. God's statutes are trustworthy. God's precepts give joy. God's command gives light. The fear of the Lord endures forever. 
God's ordinances are righteous. God's law is more precious than gold. God's law is sweeter than honey. By God's law, you are blessed.